I rode my bike over to the university, get some lunch. It's cheap, cheap lunch. But I just wanted to get out of the house. I was spending too much time on the internet. That's depressing. I guess when you're an expat, when you don't live in, in your home country, maybe, maybe you spend more time on the internet because you live in a you live in a foreign culture, and it's it's okay, but you sometimes want to know what's going on back home. But I think you all know. I'm a, I'm a liberal, but what Fox News says a liberal is and what a liberal says a liberal is are two very different things. The, the idea is all liberals love abortion. All, all liberals want anybody to have an abortion, everybody to have an abortion or however they want to put it. And they, they neglect to say that not all liberals think abortion is good. Actually, I don't know any liberals who think abortion is good. It's a traumatic experience for a woman, I can imagine. And it's probably a very, very hard decision. But I think the difference the difference is that uh, between conservatives and liberals, a liberal may think abortion is bad, but he or she is never going to take away someone's freedom to make his or her own moral choices. When you take away someone's freedom to make moral choices, then they're not making moral choices. They're being forced to do something, maybe against their will. And I've listened to the Christian arguments because, well, actually I grew up, I grew up in the Christian faith and the evangelical fundamentalist religion and I know what they think I know what their arguments are their reasoning is for wanting to force everyone to comply with the no abortion policy and I don't I don't think it's right I don't think it is in the American tradition. Now we have to decide, do we want, do we want freedom of moral choice? And I think you'll get a lot of conservatives saying, no, we do not want freedom for moral choices. And uh, I don't think if we were to carry that to other other things in our lives, other social situations in our lives, we would see right away, why is abortion all of a sudden something that the government can control, that the government can enforce a so-called moral decision on a woman, but the government cannot force moral decisions on other things? Well, the Christians believe in souls. Religious people believe in souls. And uh, they, they believe that every, every fertilized egg has a soul. It's been given a soul by God or something like that. Which indicates that their argument is religious. It's not really social. It's not really political. It's religious. They want society at large to comply with their religious understanding. That I don't 
think is American. That's not in the American tradition where where you make somebody comply with a religious tenet, a strictly religious tenet. There is, there is no real social argument to be made for banning all abortions. It's religious, purely, totally, 100% religious. And I can't go along with that. I am not of that religion. And since I'm not of that religion, I don't think I should be forced to comply with that religion, anything about that religion. Here's another difference I was thinking about between conservatives and liberals. A conservative, a conservative relishes the use of force and violence to get his ends. To a conservative, I, I've observed conservatives all my life. I'm not just talking off the top of my head. A conservative sees the solution to so many things through force and violence. And here, the events in the United States over the last 30 years, the, the violence with guns, the mass murders we've, we've seen committed by teenagers and others, I think stems from this preponderance of conservative philosophy that force and violence are the solution. The liberal solution is not to use force and violence to solve problems. Of course, the conservatives will come back and say, well, then why don't we just disband our armies? Well, <laughs> I'm in favor of that, but I live, I, I live in the real world. I know we can't do that. that there is a line, there is a point where force to defend the lives of family and friends, of community, may be necessary. America has not been put in that position for a long, long, long time. Our country has not been invaded by foreign forces intent on overthrowing our government and enslaving our people. We have, well, we really honestly have never, I mean, honest, be honest about it. We have never in the entire history of colonization on this continent have we ever really and truly been in that position. But that seems to be the argument that conservatives put forward all the time. Well, okay, so they'll admit there's uh, very little chance of being invaded and conquered and enslaved by foreigners. So they make, they make our own government the boogeyman. And based on what? Nothing. It's not based on anything the government has never tried to disarm the population. The government has never sought to enslave people to make them do the government's bidding. We have never had anything like Adolf Hitler or, or the Nationalist Socialist Party. We've never had a Stalin. We've never had any of that in the United States, and yet, to listen to the conservatives, you'd think that we were in the middle of that. We were in the middle of a Nazi takeover or a, or a Stalinist takeover. The hyperbole is not helpful. But getting back to the difference between conservatives and liberals, 
The conservatives, as I said, believe that force and violence will solve most problems. That seems to be what they jump, jump at. You know, John McCain, Obama, Iran. You know, the uh, go, go attack the Taliban. Well, the Taliban were evil. The Taliban were supporting uh, bin Laden's crew. But what we got ourselves mired in with that philosophy is still going on. Still going on. 11 years, 11 years down the road. We're still, we're still after bin Laden, even though the, the man's dead. You know? A liberal, the liberal point of view is try to find a non-forceful, non-violent solution to the situation. And personally, I'm speaking as a liberal. I have my principles. Honest to God, I would lay down my life for my principles. And I think that's the difference between me and a conservative. I, I would lay down my life for my principles, but I think a conservative would more easily lay down somebody else's life for his principles. And um, I'm, I'm saying that from the heart. I believe that. I don't believe that conservatives would lay down their lives for their principles before killing somebody else for their principles. Because I think the, the culture of force and violence is so pervasive and so strong in the United States, it's going to take a miracle. It's going to take a miracle to get Americans to stop thinking that force and violence are the solution to most problems. And I, I hope, I hope we as a nation eventually get there, but are we going to kill ourselves off on the way? That's my fear. Anyway, those are my thoughts for today. I'm just going to ride my bike and try to get this out of my system. Because I guess I'm kind of angry, disappointed, sad. I got to ride it off. Ride it off.